everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do BDSM Terminology 101. Why are we doing this? Because as somebody who writes in this genre, I'm a little tired of the judgmental attitudes of some people when they learn that I write BDSM. I know that judgment comes because they don't understand what it is and there's so many misconceptions about it. Also because there is a lot of BDSM literature out there and a lot of BDSM fiction and as an author of BDSM, I feel it is our responsibility, though, even though we take liberties with a lot of things, to represent this lifestyle in not only a positive light, but a correct light. The first term we're going to go over is the acronym BDSM itself. It has many meanings, and it's easy to understand why people who don't live this lifestyle misunderstand it or don't get what it means. So, B and D for bondage and discipline. D and S for dominance and submission. S also stands for sadomasochism or S and M for sadism and masochism. S and M some can also use as slave and master. So that's BDSM. It, it encompasses so much and that's that's the thing it's this lifestyle or kink is so complex and has so many different levels that there is no true one way I believe to do it In my opinion the only true one thing is there always needs to be consent things should always be consensual other than that I don't have a true one way there are others who will argue and that's their right because that's the joy. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion and do things their own way as long as there's consent. The next term I want to cover is bottom. Yes, everybody thinks about spank me on my bottom. But the, in BDSM, bottom is the term referring to somebody who is on the receiving end of whatever's happening. The top is the one dishing out the sensation or the actions. It's the one giving the sensation. The next term I want to cover is dungeon. Okay? Dungeon isn't always a literal dungeon. It could be anything. It could be your living room. It can be your basement. It can be the garage. Dungeon is the term for a play space. The next term I want to go over is dungeon master or dungeon monitor. Okay? They're two different things, but they cover the same area. DM. The DM is the person who is walking around the space, watching the scenes, watching the players, monitoring them, and making sure that everybody is playing safe and within the limits and being responsible. They're the ones that are in charge of settling an argument or a debate or ousting people who are not playing safely, who are not honoring safe words, who are basically being dicks and don't belong there. The dungeon master or dungeon monitor is almost always somebody who's experienced in that lifestyle and respected. In my Overwatch series, I have some DMs who are not necessarily people who live a kinky lifestyle. They are security guys that are hired by the owner of the club who is obsessive about safe play. He has his own reasons and if you want to know them, you have to read the books. But the point being that these guys, some of them aren't necessarily kinky, but they have been educated by the doms that run the educational program within that club. They know what to look for, what signs to look for, and what to do. They are also secure, professional security guys, so they are very good at reading body language and expressions and knowing they have those instincts for when things are safe and when things aren't safe and they can handle any asshole who gets out of line. The next terms I want to cover are dominant and submissive. Now the dom dominant and submissive can refer to male or female. It doesn't matter which gender they are. They're still a dom or still a submissive. The dominant is somebody who is always in charge and who takes charge of the scene and who decides what's, what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. They basically control everything within that scene. The submissive is the person who is choosing to give up their control to the dominant. This is important. Submissives 
choose to give up their control. The dominant does not just take control. That is abuse. A submissive gives them the power over them. So if I'm submissive, I am giving the power to somebody to tell me what to do. And I am choosing to do what they say or to accept what they do. Being a dominant or being a submissive does not always have to be sexual. That goes for so much things in BDSM. It is not always sexual. In fiction, especially erotic romance, it's almost always sexual because that's the genre we're writing. That's how we want to do things. But in real life, it's not always sexual and it doesn't have to be. Now is a good time to go over the term play. The word play makes it seem like everything is always light and fun and flirty, but it isn't. Play can be intense and dark and serious as well. Just because we use the word play doesn't mean that we're not taking things seriously. Play can also be an adjective used to describe certain things, certain actions and certain types of play, like needle play or breath play or sensation play or impact play. Make sense? Power exchange is another term that I think is really important. Everybody has power. A power exchange is when somebody gives up that power and somebody else receives it, takes it, and uses it and controls it. And each person is getting what they need out of the scene. The dominant is feeding their need to control things and the submissive is feeding their need to give up their power and not be responsible for things. It's very important to realize that within a scene like this, both players or all players, if there's more than two, get what they need out of a scene. Sometimes it's just for fun and kink. That's fine. And then you're getting pleasure. Sometimes it is a need deep inside people that they have that need to give up responsibility or that need to take control. Now, why they have this need, that's where writers like us get to play a lot. We get to build their backstories and feed, create the reason why these people have these needs. In real life, people have these real needs for many different reasons, and I'm not going to go into those reasons. But the important thing is in a power exchange, both people or all people get what they need. And that is usually up to everybody in the scene. It's not just up to the dominant to make sure that everybody gets what they need, even though the dominant is the one in control. It's a consensual exchange of power. Power exchange can happen within a scene. It can also be a lifestyle. So next term, 24-7. 24-7 refers to the lifestyle and the it's a constant state of power exchange in this relationship. Let's talk about aftercare. Aftercare is that time at the end of a scene where the players will sit and usually cuddle and talk and go over what worked and what didn't and what they liked and what they didn't like. Communication is huge within BDSM. BDSM relationships are based on communication. Even if it's only for one scene or one play session or a casual play partner scenario instead of a permanent dom-sub relationship. Communication is a must because consent is a must. And in order to consent, there needs to be communication. Make sense? Anyway, aftercare is when the players tend to sit down. Like I said, there tends to be cuddling and kissing and touching if that's needed. Some subs don't want that in aftercare. They're like, don't touch me. That's okay. Then that will have been known ahead of time. But there's still going to be the dominant taking care of them by whether it's like getting food and drinks or just talking to them or just sitting beside them, making sure there is no harsh physical or emotional after effects from their play session. A safe word generally accepted within the community is the stoplight system. Red, yellow, green, right? Red means stop, means stop everything. Yellow means, hey, give me a minute. I'm not sure about what we're doing. And green is, yes, I'm all for it. Let's go. When a sub says red, everything stops. A common misconception is that dominants are always in charge. They are always in charge until the submissive calls red or says their safe word. Some subs have weird safe words like tomato or baboon or, or anaconda. A friend of mine, Candace Blevin, who is a fantastic BDSM writer, writes a safe word series. Okay, and they can be quite hardcore. 
But if you want an education in BDSM kink, take a read at those books because she's true. Limits. Limits are exactly what the word means. They're limits. They're things you won't do. There's a soft limit, which is something the submissive is uncomfortable with. But they might be willing to try in the future or with a specific person, with the right person. So, you know, ask again. Now, a hard limit is something that you will never do and never consider, no matter what. Hard limits, soft limits, desires, interests, curiosities, those are all things that are talked about in negotiations. Negotiations are discussed before a scene. That is why communication is all important in BDSM. So I could go on and on with other terms. Like, oh God, there's so many. I didn't realize there were so many I wanted to talk about until I started writing the list for this video. So why don't you, in the comments, tell me if there's any terms that you've heard, seen, read that you would like explained, and I'll go over it again in the future. We'll do like a BDSM terminology 102. <laughs> Thank you for sitting through all of that terminology, and I hope it wasn't too boring for you. Now I'm going to give you some book recommendations for authors who write really good BDSM that you can consider educational, but you can also really enjoy. I mentioned Candace Blevins earlier. She writes hardcore kink. So you might not, if you've never read BDSM or never lived the lifestyle, you might not want to start with her stories. I would suggest starting with somebody like Eden Bradley, who also writes under the name Eve Berlin. Don't start with her Training House series because it, again, is a little hardcore. But she has other books like the Dangerous series and the Dark Garden. Um, there's San Francisco Doms with Sanctuary and Breaking Sky. If you read the Training House, be warned, it is more hardcore than the others. Sierra Cartwright is another author that is a great place to start with BDSM fiction. If you want to read really good, emotional, well-written BDSM stories, start with her Mastered series, perhaps, or the Donovan Dynasty. I like the Donovans, personally, because they're kind of cowboys, too. Joey W. Hill is a phenomenal BDSM writer. Um, I don't know if I've ever read another author who writes femdom so well. You might think you'd never like a femdom story until you read one of hers. Last, but definitely not least, I want to recommend Bianca Summerland because Bianca Summerland not only writes amazing BDSM and kink, she writes fabulous polyamorous relationships. Polyamorous is responsible non-monogamy, more than one person in the relationship. There's male-male, and there's female-female, and there's male-female-female, male-female-male, all kinds of... Anyways... Bianca writes the best poly stories I have ever read. And they're all got levels, different levels of kink in there. There's nothing really hardcore that I've read from her that has made me go, wow. So I definitely recommend hers. And of course, there's me. <laughs> I have my um, True Desire series with Bound and Trouble and Wicked that have bits of kink in it. They're not hardcore at all. They're very light BDSM. And then I have my Overwatch series, which is based around the club. And again, nothing hardcore. Now, the Overwatch series will get more hardcore as it goes on because it's all about the same characters within the story. So as their relationships deepen, so will their exploration of kink and each other. So those are my book recommendations. Links are in the bottom. Please check them out. So thanks for sticking with me through that. I know it might not have been the most entertaining, but I really hope you got something out of it, especially the book recommendations. If you are interested in a free download of Unfettered, the first book in my Overwatch series, check the link below. There is a limited number of downloads on that link. So when you see it, click on it, download that ebook. Hopefully we'll hook you on this series as well as get you educated a little bit in a fun way more about BDSM. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and click the little bell next to it so you get notified when I do another video. Bye. We say playing, but that doesn't mean we're not taking it seriously. 
play is the interaction of the people within a scene. A scene is a set. Playtime. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm explaining those ones very well. Like I have a series where there is a kink club and it's titled The Dungeon. But there is many areas within the dungeon. One is a play space, one is a dancing area, and there's upstairs private rooms. But they're all part of the dungeon because they're all part of, that's the name of the kink place. I think I might have to cut that, that might not make sense. But she has other books like The Dangerous Serious. The, 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 